In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a really amazing tool called Ahrefs. So this tool is very similar to Majestic SEO, but the user interface of it is a lot friendlier and it has a lot of useful information. I'm going to show you exactly what it has and then I'm going to show you exactly how I use it for research and tracking. So first, we're going to just use one of the domains that we did SEO for. So here's what we're looking at. First, we have how many total domains are pointing to this website. And then we're showing how many of those are actually unique domains on unique IP addresses. We also see how many backlinks in total. Now, this is an overview of external links coming into the website. What you can see here is how many new links were created and it can go month by month so you can actually track how many links are being generated and you can also see how many links were lost for whatever reason the indexing or the website went offline or you know your link actually got removed then we can look at the anchor text that is pointing to the website and the cool part about it is that you can click on this little plus sign and it will tell you which website specifically is pointing to the website using that particular anchor text and this is really useful to you know see the top guys and how they're doing their anchor texts and by following what the top guys are doing you have a good chance to getting to the top yourself the other thing that I use is the referring domain names and this tells me exactly which website is sending the links to the main site and in what kind of quantities. And again, that gives me an idea of who advertises where or where they have the links published and so on. Now, another cool tool I use is the organic keyword. So what this does is you can actually see which keywords are ranked in Google and in Yahoo and Bing. And it tells you if, if the ranking went up or down. So month by month, you can actually get an idea of how well your SEO is performing. And it also tells you how competitive that word is. So it's a high competition or not so high and so on. So if you got a rank increase for a, a very competitive term, and it tells you on what date the scraping and the crawling was done, you know, this gives you an idea, again, how well you're performing. This tells you how many visits approximately you should get. Here you can see how much traffic is being generated organically. So this is what you would have to pay to get this kind of traffic on a monthly basis. And it tells you which countries are linking to you. So you have U.S., Great Britain, Australia, and so on. So where exactly you are ranked in specific countries. So if you want to rank in a different country and you want to get a better ranking and you see that you're not performing very well there, so you know, you'll know you know where to focus. So this is the first tool that I really like, which is the Site Explorer. It's very similar to Majestic SEO, but like I said, it's a really nice, clean user interface and it really gives you a big picture overview of what's happening as far as link building. The next thing is the SERP analysis. So what I like about the SERP analysis is when we track your competitor, and I'll just put my own site here, this can really tell you which keywords they're bidding on and how heavy the competition is and where the, your competitor is ranked. So you can check organic words, you can also check the paid words, and you can check the daily stats, which is which keywords got ranked and which keywords got lost. And this is really useful because if you're doing a massive organic campaign and you're doing a few things such as on-site SEO by changing your content and a week later you want to see if you're getting results from it or not. So you would be checking this so you're not left in the dark. And as you're checking this, you can also kind of see what the cost changes. In other words, how much more money-wise traffic you got because of these new keywords. You have uh, a list of different keywords here and how much the traffic costs and specifically which keywords were lost and which were new and how many positions they were up. So basically this is a, an analytic tool that you can use to track your daily stats. Now let's go back here and I'll show you what I use all these tools for. For the SERP analysis, what you would use this for is when you're looking at your competitor, number one, you can easily tell how many keywords they are ranked for, which ones are their top keywords, and so on. You can export the whole thing into a CSV file and sort it by 
how much competition that particular keyword has or how much traffic that particular keyword gives that particular competitor. So in order to figure out which words you should be ranking for and which words you can just literally download and put into your visitor generated SEO, for example, this is a really good tool as I'm sure you know who your competitors are and you can easily kind of get the whole rundown on them and what keywords they are ranked organically and what keywords they are paying for and especially the ones that they are paying for, you can definitely export it into a CSV file and put it into your visitor generated SEO. Now, whenever there is a Google Panda update or Penguin update or whatever else they want to call their updates, immediately you could go and check what happened to different competitors, including your own site. You would go to daily stats and for example, you know, we go to keywords and on April 24th, I believe, the Penguin update came out. So a week later, you know, because usually Ahrefs doesn't pick everything up the next day, but over the next month, you would be able to see what's going on. So I'm looking at car ID right now and we can kind of see what happened over the period. So they actually ended up benefiting from the whole thing. They got, you know, more keywords go up then down a little bit later you can see how their positions went so it looks like even though they got more keywords ranked some of the positions started to go down so you can see some positions went up some positions went down again overall it's not bad at all and cost change which tells you how much money they made because of the ranking algorithm change you can see that you know most of it went up very little went down so this is a nice analysis tool to see what's going on when algorithms change. It's also a nice tool to kind of see what your competitors are doing and just you know, literally sit there and analyze it. If you click on history changes and you can say, you know, past seven days or past 30 days, or you can do a custom period. You can basically see at which point a keyword ranked and, and at which point it dropped. And you can go on a day by day basis to see how far it went up. So suicide doors went up 14 positions and they're number five on may 3rd and so on now this is a SERP analysis now every time there's an algorithm change there's obviously winners and losers you want to see who's the winner and who's the loser and what they have in common so at that point we would end up using site explorer i like site explorer for two reasons number one again algorithm changes you can see who won who lost and kind of analyze what they're doing and what kind of links they have coming in into their site. The other thing about this is you can see which websites are pointing to them, and sometimes it could be a review site or a form or whatever, and you can kind of see what their backlinking strategy is. So I analyzed Car ID earlier, and they have 7,000 referring domain names, about 1.2 million links based on the organic keywords tab here they generate approximately $154,000 a month worth of traffic that they would normally have to pay for, but they're getting it for free. Now, at the end of this video, I'm gonna cover how do we get to the position of where Car ID is today in a period of uh, half a year, but that's gonna to be towards the end of the video. But here's what I like about this particular tool. Number one is where are the links coming from and what keywords are they using? So first is what keywords are they using? One thing that Google Penguin update did was if you have your website and you're trying to rank for a specific keyword and you end up having more backlinks from different websites with the same exact keyword over and over again. So in other words, similar to this, like the word car accessories, it's not a part of their name. So that means that there's that many websites trying to point to car ID with the word car accessories. So the problem with this is if they did not have this and no text means that they just have a website like www.domainname.com in all of these backlinks and all 684 domains, 10,000 backlinks. If they didn't have this, then they probably would have been affected by the Penguin update. If they didn't have these two things, they would have been affected by the Penguin update because Penguin update was looking for two things. Are your top backlinks either no text or your domain name? And if the answer is yes, then you have a much better chance of not getting penalized by having you know other keywords to have less links pointing to you. The other, the other thing they were looking at is how many of the same words do you have pointing to you? So again, the word floor mats, the word Lambo doors and so on, if you don't have a good enough ratio and you have the same word pointing to you over and over again, then 
that would be a problem. Now, they have the same words pointing to them over and over again. It's not a bad thing that you do that as long as it's coming from a relevant link. What does the relevant link mean? Well, you have to ask yourself a question. Would you want to put a link on somebody's website and pay for it for the purpose of the traffic on that website that you're paying is relevant to your product. In other words, you're going to pay for it and then you're, you're going to get a benefit out of it that has nothing to do with search engine ranking. If the answer is yes, then that's a good link and you can have the same word on it because Google will see that the website pointing to you has a very you know relevant niche. So again, you can't abuse how many times you, you could do the same word over and over again, but they look on that lightly versus you know you're, you're trying to spam them. Bottom line is the websites that are referring to you, which is this tab here, referring domain names, are any of these really beneficial to your visitors? In other words, would you pay this website to have their traffic go to you and actually benefit sales-wise? If the answer is yes, then this is a good link. What Car ID did specifically is they are sponsoring every single car form on the market, which is where they're getting all of these massive amounts of links. So all of these links pointing to them is automotive forms, so they benefit from two things. Number one, they benefit from SEO ranking. And number two, they're benefiting from sponsoring that forum because that forum is sending them traffic that will result in sales. So not only do they get ranking, but they also get sales from that traffic, which is a really good strategy. If you can afford to sponsor a forum, I mean, this is a no-brainer. You know, keep in mind, you can't just sponsor a forum and that's it. You have to put a banner and you have to do anchor text banner on the bottom of every page. I don't want to get into how to do that. You can just go to these forums and see how they did it, where they have their link. You can also get this tool and, and do your own analysis. But the bottom line is that using this tool, it's a really nice user interface and it will give you a big picture overview of what your competitor is doing, where they're getting their links. You'll see what they're doing. So if they're successful and you just have to follow their footsteps to be just as successful. Another thing I wanted to mention is when you're doing your own backlinks, this is a good strategy to use by monitoring this on a you know, weekly basis to see how your backlink strategy is moving along. And if you're doing any kind of on-site SEO to a specific product page, the SERP analysis would be a good strategy to see how that SEO affected you for that particular page and overall. So in other words, whenever we do site-wide changes, like we released their local APS articles, how did the local APS articles help you in your SERP analysis? It's really useful to see how the progress is going as you're working on it, and this tool ends up monitoring the changes. The final thing is how do we get to the kind of traffic that Car ID has? So we just have to work backwards. So we know that they're sponsoring forms. Obviously, that's one of the ways of doing it is go and sponsor all the forms as well. The other way is we could check you know, how they did their links. So they have a total of 7,000 pages and specifically 3,800 unique ones generating 1.2 million links. So the other strategy would be to replicate this quantity of referring domain names and links. This chart speaks for itself that you'll eventually end up getting enough authority to have all the different keywords on your site rank and, and so on and so on. So we would need to potentially replicate. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out is under referring domain names, if you look, a lot of the websites, when we go down to page three and so on, are coming from blogs. So there is actually direct domain blogs that they created themselves. There's also WordPress blogs that they also created themselves. So Majestic SEO, which is a different tool, shows a lot more information, specifically historic information about Car ID. And they're showing that you know, block spots, they have 8,000 plus links and WordPress, 6,500 links and blog.com. So between Majestic and Ahrefs, Car ID heavily utilized blogs and forms to get the ranking that they have today. So the strategy that I'm proposing that can be implemented would be using the Shopping Car Lead blog poster and using this particular schedule that's available in the tutorials to implement 5,000 blogs, which will generate half a million backlinks. And I show you how to do it. Day one, you make one blog. Day two, one blog. Day three, one blog. And as you go down, this is all scheduled ahead of time. Eventually, you know, on the last day, you'll make 60-something blogs that day. And the total sum of it would be 
850 hours of work, which is about five months of labor. And if you go on odesk.com and hire a Philippine worker or different workers, Indian, pa Pakistan, and so on, you can budget anywhere between $500 and $1,500 in total for the labor of creating these blogs. You would still have to manage it, but at the end of the day, you're going to end up with 5,000 blogs steadily increasing every single day. There's going to be 500,000 backlinks. And if we go back to the Car ID and take a look at their total number of links, they're not too far off. They have 7,000 domains, which actually make 3,800 different IPs, but it's still 7,000 domains with 1.2 million backlinks. You would be at 5,000 with half a million backlinks. So you'd be half of Car ID's status using this particular strategy. Now I'm going to have a different tutorial on the details of how to hire and implement that particular strategy, but this is what needs to be done in order to achieve this kind of ranking. You either do forms or some other type of paid advertising where you can benefit from ranking and the traffic, or you implement this massive block strategy to get those results.